end of a time straight away to to Khan to proceed with this talk. Yeah, uh, thank you, Amros, uh, for that wonderful introduction. I hope I'm audible. Okay, great. So uh, let me uh, start sharing my screen. Okay, so so uh, you know today's topic. Uh, before I start uh, today's presentation, again I would like to thank uh, you know the entire team of Geek Camp uh, Singapore for putting this up and uh, for inviting me to you know present my talk. So thank you so much. So here's a brief background about me. Um, I think Ambrose already mentioned, but uh, I've been working primarily as uh, an Android mobile developer. But uh, more recently, I have been also dabbling on AI technologies like AI, AR, and VR. And I would say, apart from being passionate about technology, I also write poems, uh, traveling to different places across the globe and meeting new people. So that's about me in a nutshell. So uh, coming to the topic uh, of today. So before that, uh, you know, here's a brief uh, background. So the Java flight recorder basically was uh, uh, an event recorder, which was built into the JVM. And the main objective of this or the main task of uh, this uh, recorder was to do uh, certain activities like profiling, I would say garbage collection, black box analysis. So these were mainly the task, uh, you know, this, this kind of a flight recorder was, uh, you know, designed to perform. It was open sourced in the year 2018. So that was the year where it was, uh, you know, open sourced. And uh, uh, there is, it is said that it has almost no performance overhead. So there is a short time here. So when I say no performance overhead, uh, it means that if you are using the standard or the default, you know, uh, the settings of the Java flight recorder, the performance overhead observed is slightly less than say a 2%. But if you you know you, if you're using it for applications which are you know slow running or applications which are not really ideal for a production environment, then of course the performance overhead would be slightly more than two percent. So you know that is a short disclaimer on the on the performance part. And uh, the main uh, the main task uh, I would say is the analysis and the visualization of the flight recording. So that is basically done using something called as the Java Machine Control. So what is exactly the Java Machine Control? Now the Java machine control, I think most of us have you know, seen it or might have even used it. So it's basically a graphical user interface that you know, provides a set of tools for monitoring and profiling of Java applications. So what does uh, this do is that it takes as an input a flight recording file. So it's basically a file with a .gfr extension. And this file basically, once you open it into the Java machine control, it shows you, uh, you know, a lot of statistical information, like it shows you the heap usage, the CPU usage, and so on. So this is basically shown in a very graphical user interface manner, so you know people can visualize it better and you know, understand, uh, you know, the the bottlenecks in the in the application. Also, I would like to mention, uh, like this also has been open sourced, and there is an open source version of this available. So I've mentioned uh, the link uh, at the bottom. Now coming to the the main topic, which basically everyone is uh, you know using nowadays, is about the Java Flight Recorder. Now, how does actually one uh, start using or start running the Java Flight Recorder? So for this, basically there are two approaches that exist as of today. So one, the first approach is using a command line. So one can actually use a tool called the JCMD tool, which is basically a part of the Java installation directory. And using this command, one can um, start the flight recording so this command basically would be something like uh, you specify the process id so you in this case if you go with the first example so it mentions uh, cmd followed by the process id followed by uh, the method or the task in this case i would like to start the recording you specify a duration so that will be the duration of the recording followed by the file name of the recording so in this case i have just given an example like a my recording.jfr so what this would do is that this would start the flight recording and this would basically go on for a duration of 60 seconds and then write you know the contents to a particular recording file now this is the most common approach of you know starting uh, the recording using the jcmd tool however the second approach is what uh, you know we are going to discuss more in detail which is using the java flight recorder api now uh, you know in order to basically use a java flight recorder api you need to write a java program or an agent so in this case, uh, how would you actually start the recording? So for that, you would use a command like this, where I have specified certain uh, parameters, which is basically going to uh, specify whether to start the flight recording. 
So in this case, you could basically go with Java hyphen X start flight recording followed by the file name and the name of your file. So this file is basically going to be a Java program that would basically have the, the it will make use of the Java flight recorder API. Also, here I would like to mention that the Java flight recorder is a commercial feature and it is basically requiring, requiring a license if, if it's to be used on a production environment. However, if you if you are planning to use it maybe in a development environment, you could easily go ahead and unlock uh, the commercial features by using uh, you know the, the next command, which is basically going to unlock the commercial features and do the same task of you know starting the flight recording for that specific duration. So this is how you know one can basically get started or start running the Java flight rec flight recorder. Now coming to the next slide. So how does actually one create his first or start recording his first event? So for that one can actually use the Java flight recorder API and one can go about creating a simple class. So you create a simple uh, class which basically extends the event class. So the event is the base class on, in the, in the JDK.JFR package, which would basically uh, you know, denote the, your event. So here you could have uh, multiple uh, kind of events. You could actually go, go about creating your own events as well. So in this case, I have basically created a simple event uh, with a particular annotation. So I'll be talking more about annotations in the subsequent slides. And here you can see that there are two, primarily two methods. So once you create an object of your event class, you can you can use two methods, basically event.begin and event.commit, which is basically going to start and you know stop the recording. So the event.begin would basically start the recording and the event.commit would be would basically end the recording as well as it would basically write the you know the recording to a file so it does basically uh, two tasks so that is uh, the purpose of the event.commit so here you can also see that i have specified an optional uh, you know message over here which is basically a parameter in this case so you could actually uh, here is where you can actually specify the log message in your case and this would help help you to understand uh, how you know the event flight recorder the flight recorder api can be used to capture certain events now this is a uh, you know a very simple example but let's try to understand it uh, through the through, through code so what i have done is that i have created a short recording of a demo that i had uh, you know that i had come up with so let me just uh, try to play that so here is uh, the same uh, you know the same class here is the flight recorder class over here and here i have basically uh, you know gone about with creating a, a, a particular class called hello which is extending the base class and here is where I, you know, start uh, start uh, recording and uh, the event. So if I had to run this uh, application, so let's say I run this application uh, using the start uh, flight recording uh, parameter. So this is how it would behave. So once you start running it, it would show you a message saying that it has started. Running. So it shows you that it has started recording and uh, there is using a max size of say 250 MB. So this is basically the default. So now basically one can uh, you know use the Java flight recorder. So once the rec recording basically has started, one can use something called as a GFR. So the GFR basically is also a tool that uh, is used to view the contents of the recording. So here you can see that uh, you know I have used the GFR command to print uh, you know the recording, the contents of the recording file. So this is basically something that uh, I would be talking about uh, in the next slide. So uh, I mentioned about the event metadata. So right, the event metadata basically comprises of you know the the annotations, the descriptions, the labels. So this is basically to provide more uh, you know kind of uh, data about the events. The event uh, you know the, we can also have category annotations. So you can have an annotation called category, which is basically used to uh, I would say divide or you know categorize your events. So if you have say more than one event in your project and if you want to you know group them so i would suggest using the category annotation as well as you know you can if you have more than one category then you can use a comma separated list of uh, strings as well so that is also possible and uh, coming to the next slide where i spoke about the jfr tool now once uh, you know you start the recording the output of that is going to be a, a java flight recorder file so it's going to be a flight recording but then this flight recording is not something that is human readable right so it is it's not contain info it, by default it does not contain uh, you know those information that you could simply output into a more uni human readable format so for that we use something called as a gfr tool and the gfr tool is exactly doing this so it basically helps you to filter and summarize 
the flight recording files into a more human readable format so you know to go back to the uh, to the video which i have was playing so in this case you can see that once you basically output uh, you know the the uh, you use the print command and output contents of the recording file here you can see that it specifies the start time the duration the message that i basically logged as well as a, a stack trace in case of you know if there are certain issues or anything and the event thread in that case as well so you know these kind of uh, you know information can be basically then uh, you know visualized or an analyzed in a way to determine you know what could be the possible bottleneck in your program so this is basically how the java flight recorder jfr tool basically is working and this tool is also you know part of the jdk as well so this is something that you could uh, you know use as well now uh, coming to the next part so i spoke about uh, how one can you know print the contents or view the contents of the recording files so for that one could simply use a simple command which is the jfr print command followed by the name of you know the the class that you are using so in this is hello flight recorder and the name followed by the name of the recording file so this would basically output uh, you know something like this which uh, you know specifies the start time the duration message and these kind of uh, these are the default i would say uh, you know the information that would come but then you could uh, customize it as well so uh, now the question arises like why do we actually need to use the java flight recorder or why do we need to use this particular api so you know as software developers uh, the most common scenario we face nowadays is basically when a production issue occurs and whenever it occurs i think the most uh, you know the, one of the most uh, common things we do is we start you know uh, analyzing the logs so we need to understand that is logging actually the most effective you know strategies for debugging in production and if yes then how does actually one uh, you know try to manage the log files because uh, if there are you know there can be several log files so you know they would grow eventually in size then how does actually one manage it whether they keep it at a centralized location or they you know archive it so there are a lot of questions that needs to you know be answered especially in case of a logging mechanism and the idea basically is to understand whether it's really safe to debug in production now you know for those of you who have used logging frameworks i think one of the most common frameworks has been the java util login now you know the java util login has been there for quite some time and it has been there ever since jdk 1.4 however you know there is uh, you know there is a there is a way by which one can you know feel that this uh, this framework is not uh, you know behaving or not you know being used widely enough and the the, uh, the fact is that many popular application servers like apache tomcat itself they have their own uh, default implementation of logging so even they do not use uh, you know uh, the standard java util login they have uh, you know their own default implementation and this is mainly due to the fact that the java util login uh, you know does not have the ability to have per web application login and there is always there is always a lack of a buffered handler uh, you know implementation that has a significant imp impact on the performance if you are using the java util login and the main reason i would say is uh, for the lack of adoption of the java util login these days is that it does not provide uh, more information about the context in which the event occurs so this is again one of the main reasons i would say that you know the java util login is not used as widely as the other logging uh, frameworks so you know to highlight some of the differences between the jfr and jul so the jfr yes it does provide contextual information about the event so i talked about the metadata aspect where you can have event metadata you can define your own metadata so that is basically going to provide you more contextual information whereas on the other hand the java util login basically will be only responsible for capturing events of you know which are basically log records and passing them to the appropriate appender uh, yes the jfr would require a commercial license whereas the java util login does not require any license at all and the jfr uh, the recording files basically can be visualized uh, i would say later on so if you plan to visualize the jfr recording files they can be done whereas in case of jul there is no such visualization support uh, on the other hand uh, both support customization of events so you are again the jfr and the jul i would say score equally but uh, the jfr of course would take some time uh, to set up so there will be some amount of time that you would like to invest in the beginning but at the long run it could save you a lot of time whereas the jul is something that one could uh, you know quickly set up in less time uh, without much hassle so so that is basically the key differences between the jfr and the jul 
So let's take a more uh, practical example. So, you know, we understood how the JFR is working. So let's take an example of how the JFR will be used in a practical use case. So let's say I have to identify certain slow running SQL queries in my project. So how do I go about using or identifying, uh, you know, that using the Java flight record API? So let's say you have a query like this where you can see that uh, you know there is an inner join or there is a join being performed on two tables so there is a product table and a sales order detail table and both these tables basically there is an inner join being done on say a particular column and you can see there is an or condition you know on a particular column now assuming you know even if these uh, the table the columns in these tables were not indexed the or condition itself would create a lot of uh, you know it would consume a lot of processing power and that would basically eventually result in a slow running query but uh, you know this this particular i would say this particular query is not the ideal one so if i had to basically create an ideal uh, you know, an ideal running query in this particular situation i would basically replace this or with something called as a select and then i would basically do a union so the select operation basically uh, would be replacing the or in this case and the union basically would help to concatenate the results and the duplicate so this is how you know this is how one can uh, usually write this kind of a query uh, you know if if you have one is familiar with the the back end technologies but then if you are uh, if you are if you're using the java flight recorder api then you know how does one you know go about identifying this so fortunately the java flight recorder api can be used even in this scenario so how does one actually go about using this is what i'll be you know demoing uh, right now so let's go back uh, to our uh, to our recording where I have um, created the same program. So I have uh, basically uh, an example here called the SQL Analyzer class. So this SQL Analyzer class basically is doing a mainly two uh, activities. Basically, it tries to insert certain records. So it tries to insert uh, a large number of records in the table. It fetches some records from a table as well as it deletes the records from the table. So uh, let's try to run this application. So this is again a, a custom class that I have, uh, you know, created that uses uh, the Java Flight Recorder API. Again, I would, uh, you know, run this. So it's a simple menu-driven program which would basically, uh, you know, ask you to do certain tasks. So in this case, the first task would be to ensure that there are no records in the table. So I would basically go about deleting the records. So yes, so the, the records are deleted. Now let's try inserting the records. So this would basically insert uh, so around say 15k records in the table. So, okay, so now it's basically inserting the record. So this would uh, take quite some time. And then let's uh, go ahead a little bit. So once it is done inserting the records, so once uh, you have, uh, you know, completed inserting the records, you could actually uh, try fetching them. So here is where, uh, you know, each of these uh, methods or each of these operations, I have basically used uh, the event.begin and the event.commit uh, methods of the Java Flight Recorder API to understand how much time it would take. So in this case i have basically uh, tried to enter uh, an, uh, a value which is not exist so it has it has done the fetching of the record but it has not found the item whereas in this case i tr the next case i try entering uh, a number which is say, uh, something that is existing so it has found uh, that this, this particular value now let's try to understand how or how much time it took actually to do all these operations so again i would use uh, you know the uh, the JFR tool to print the contents of the recording. So, you know, once this is done, you would be able to, you'll be able to understand how much time it took. So here is the result. So here uh, is the result of the of the entire, you know, the operation. So here you can see that the deleting of records from the database, it took around, say, 97.3 milliseconds. Uh, the inserting of records uh, took around 49.2 seconds. Uh, so that was the insert operation. And when we try to fetch a record which was uh, not existing, it took around 49.2 milliseconds. So that was for a record which was not existing. Whereas for a record which was existing, it took uh, around you know, roughly around eight milliseconds. So that is, uh, you know, that is how one can analyze. So this is basically a simple example, but one can actually use this in projects which having which are using certain nested queries or certain complex queries to identify you know what are the possible what could be the possible bottlenecks uh, you know in that particular query so this is also you know something that could be used especially in you know projects which are doing a lot of database related operations so coming to the next slide 
so this is uh, you know this is something that uh, i just demonstrated so it talks about how you know you one can use uh, the java flight recorder to query uh, or to understand uh, the different operations going on in the database so i'll just uh, you know skim through this so uh, apart from apart from the you know the, the the main task of recording of the flight events or to you know basically log the events i think gfr does have a lot more to offer so there are something is that you know one could actually leverage which is more in terms of periodic events dynamic events custom annotations and finally the event streaming api so i have basically uh, you know try to focus more on the the last one which is basically the event streaming api i think something this is also something that one could uh, easily leverage in uh, in in current projects today so the event streaming api basically is nothing but uh, you know to help you to custom to write custom events to monitor http calls so this so how do we go about that again the process would be the same you create a class which extends you know, the, the event class which is the base class and you specify a unique event name so in this case i have gone with a, a simple name called as a com.app.flightrecorderdemo.http request event so this name would be uh, my unique name and you define certain query uh, you know some metadata so in this case it would be the query parameters so in this case what i plan to do is that i want to fetch or get uh, the uh, query parameters from the url and try to log it so the question is how do i basically create an endpoint so for this you would need to create a restful endpoint of course so you need to have maybe in this case i would uh, recommend leveraging like spring boot frameworks like spring boot or you could go with any uh, known framework out there and you could create a simple endpoint so in this case i have created a simple endpoint called greeting so which takes in a, you know a default parameter say name and what it does is that it just basically uh, you know uses the java flight recorder api to to log or to log this particular event uh, using the query parameters uh, you know metadata so this is how uh, you know one can actually create an endpoint and then uh, use it so let's try to understand how this would work so going back uh, to you know, to the video again so here is where uh, you know how, how I would use uh, you know the the particular uh, the Java event you know the event streaming API. So here you can see I have created my endpoint. So there is an endpoint which is there, and you have this particular uh, class that I have already created. So this class would basically have uh, all the you know metadata information that you need to capture. So in this case, I have gone with a you know simple query parameters. And here is how you basically run it. So you, first of all, you need to basically uh, start the server. So you need to you know, specify uh, this command by which you could start the server and also start the recording. So this command basically would take in the file name, the recording, and also start the server. So you can see that the server has now started. And the endpoint is uh, something that you could call using a standard web browser. So you can go in the web browser and specify, you know, the name. In this case, I've just specified uh, my name, and then you see that the endpoint has been invoked. Now, what has what is happening in the background is that although the logging is done, uh, you know, one needs to identify whether you know whether how this would basically work. So for that, the, one needs to also write an agent or a program that would basically subscribe to this event. So this is where I would like to highlight uh, one of the uh, one of the classes of the Java Flight Recorder API, which is the Event Stream class. So this Event Stream class basically would uh, what would it do is that it would basically subscribe to this event. So the subscribe, as in it would listen to the event and then basically try to extract these query parameters. So here is where you could write your own custom logic. So you can listen to these events, uh, you know, try to listen to these events and try to understand like how much time it would take, uh, you know, to if there is a particular event. So here it is. It has started listening. So if you basically uh, type in the name again and you try to invoke this endpoint again, this would basically, uh, you know, try to print you print the statement or print the the information of the recording. So here, yes, it it has thus it has logged it, but then let's see the recording. So here you can see that uh, you know there is, since it's in a loop, you have a uh, you have a message that has been printed, which is basically the query parameters uh, the person has passed uh, through the URL. So here is you know one uh, way by which you can actually leverage this, uh, especially if you are having a, a microservice kind of an approach, where you are using several microservices to to do certain tasks. So you can actually have the Java Flight Recorder API to monitor these tasks and to understand 
you know which of these microservices is taking you know a lot of time so this is uh, you know one of the ways by which the java flight recorder can be used and here you can see that uh, the recording once you uh, you know view the contents of the recording you can see that you know the 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 values that have been printed so in this case the query parameters that you passed in the first case as well as the query parameters you passed in the second case uh, you know these are basically uh, being printed uh, as well so you know this is how one can uh, you know use uh, this particular uh, you know this particular feature or this particular api offered by the java flight recorder so uh, so this is about uh, how uh, one can uh, you know use the event streaming api so again a, a popular feature as a part of the java flight recorder so uh, that's it from my side so again uh, you know i would like to uh, mention that all the programs that have basically been tested using the gdk16 so if one wants to leverage this or one wants to you know build upon these examples one can easily uh, you know uh, you know download them i have mentioned the links uh, to all the demo videos and the sample code so please feel free to to have a look at them and to basically leverage them in your uh, own projects as well so uh, you know that is where i would say that you can actually you know try to put it into use uh, in your projects so uh, yes so you know there, there is always a, going to be a never ending debate about the fact that you know which framework to use whether to use uh, you know the java, java flight recorder or to use any other logging framework but here i would like to you know just mention that uh, one should actually choose the approach that suits you so if you are you know some one of those developers who would like to monitor the production environment without using any kind of a logging mechanism then definitely i would say that the java flight recorder api can help you whereas if you want you know you know uh, to use continue using a java logging framework then of course there are so many other frameworks out there as well so these are you know some of the references based on which i compiled my presentation today and uh, once again i would like to thank uh, the geek camp singapore team uh, for this excellent uh, i would say uh, giving us this excellent opportunity uh, and this excellent uh, i would say the whole concept of uh, the geek camp uh, really so thank you so much uh, to the entire team